What's up, everybody? Let's Talk Jets Radio. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, hope everybody's staying safe with the, with the weather. Roads are pretty clear now. This morning they were a little messy on, on the commute coming to work. Uh, this video is just going to talk a little bit about the tight end position. We've spent, I don't know how many weeks in a row, kind of going back and forth, uh, talking a little bit about draft picks. It seems like the consensus is already uh, Trey McBride somewhere in the second round. Uh, we've also taken a, a lot of calls, a lot of comments, talking about you know Dalton Schultz, Mike Jacecki. You know those are the players that the Jets should break the bank for. Um, tight end should be the priority, and I, and I totally understand that, and I totally agree. Um, but I'm going to talk about somebody that I haven't really heard too many people mention. Again, I'm I'm far from being a, a draft expert, so if you want to eviscerate my take, feel free to do so. Um, and I probably don't follow enough people to really give any accurate insight as far as whether or not this player is really being talked about or not. Um, but for from those that I do follow pretty closely that are, are pretty good with the draft, that usually give pretty good opinions and pretty good takes, uh, this is a name that I really haven't seen talked about too much. And looking at different mock drafts, I've seen this guy go anywhere from the middle of round two uh, all the way through possibly round six, which, which is a pretty far drop off. Um, I've also seen him ranked, you know, anywhere from fourth or fifth amongst most tight ends to out of the top 10 somewhere in the, you know, 12, 13 range. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of differing opinions on this player. And I'll, just, I'll go ahead and say his name, uh, Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin. Um, again, I'm not a draft expert. I don't, I don't pretend to, you know, study these players for a living like, you know, a lot of other people do. Um, you know, there's certainly, I think, some other people that probably have a little bit more insight on him that have done a lot more homework. Usually by, by March, April, I've, you know, consumed at least a little bit of film and I have a, a pretty good degree of knowledge on most of these players that are going to be coming out, at least the guys that could be targets for the Jets. Um, but right now, you know, this early in January, usually I'm more focused on free agency. But with, you know, with all the picks that the Jets have, you know, four picks within the top 40, uh, I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen and how Joe Douglas is going to approach this. And just based off of everything that we've been talking about, um, as far as what the Jets and LaFleur are probably going to be looking for in their tight end, I think Jake Ferguson would be an absolute match made in heaven, an absolute perfect fit for the Jets, for their offense, and for what LaFleur would want to do. Um, you start with just the fact that it seems like they value well-rounded tight ends. It's something that Tyson's been talking about every week, that if you're just a pass catcher, there's probably not really much, you know, much space for you in this Jets offense. Um, you know, same thing if you're only a blocker, you know, and you can't contribute in the passing game, you know, you, you kind of make yourselves one-handed in a way. You make yourselves kind of predictable. And when you look at Ferguson's game, it, it seems like the consensus is that his strength is as a run blocker, but he's pretty competent uh, in pass protection as well. And then you go and you look at all the different ways that Wisconsin used him within that offense. Um, you know, they had him as an H-back. They lined him up as a traditional wide tight end. Uh, I think they even used him a little bit in the slot as a receiver sometimes. I'm pretty sure in his four years with Wisconsin, uh, you know, he's had over 30 catches every year. He might not have that, you know, that one elite trait, you know, like a Kyle Pitts or whatever. Like he's not going to have that one thing that really jumps off at you, um, you know, that might make you say he's going to be an elite player. But it doesn't seem like he has anything that he does bad either. You know, it doesn't really seem like his game has a, a serious weakness. If you want to point maybe to his speed, uh, you know, that might be one thing. But it, it seems like after the catch and, you know, getting open at the top of his routes, the guy's pretty athletic. And, you know, he's, he's a tough kid. He's gotten better every year. I just think he's he's such a well-rounded player that could really fit this offense. And even more so, if you start to look at, um, the, the way Wisconsin kind of ran their offense and all the responsibilities that they had him do, uh, in particular, just, you know, uh, lining up in different areas, like I mentioned, going in motion. You know, LaFleur has tons of, of motion in his offense. It just almost feels like he's the type of tough, smart player that would really fit well here. So uh, I'm hoping he's going to be an option for the Jets. I'm not going to try to say where I think he's going to go yet at this stage. I, I think it's too early for me to do that. It wouldn't be fair with the, the limited amount of work that I've done so far. But like I said, I, I've seen him mocked anywhere from the middle of round two all the way down through, you know, round five and round six. Uh, most common, I feel like I've seen him in round three, so maybe that's the, the place that the Jets try to target him at the top of round three. I don't know if the second pick in round two would be considered a reach or not, but at the end of the day, you're ultimately trying to find guys that are going to be good scheme fits, good leaders, guys that are going to fit what you're trying to do and what you're trying to build, and it seems like Jake Ferguson would be a good start as a tight end, and it would be regardless of whether or not you sign somebody. You know, you could still bring in a Jacecki or a Schultz or an O.J. Howard or an Njoku or whoever, and you could still 
still afford to draft a tight end in round two or round three. That wouldn't be an issue at all. The Jets are still going to run, you know, multiple, you know, two tight end sets. That's something LaFleur did quite a bit this year. Uh, we, unfortunately, I just didn't have the pieces to really do it. You know, you can roll out Ryan Griffin and, and Tyler Croft and all those guys, but, you know, I, I think there's a, a legitimate opportunity for the Jets to kind of upgrade those positions where you're going to want to have two tight ends on the field. You know, the same way the Patriots just invested, um, you know, a, a lot of money in both Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry, I think the Jets, to a lesser extent, have a really nice opportunity to be able to do that this year with the draft class that I think is pretty deep. Um, you know, again, it might not have elite talent, but there are some good solid playmakers that you can get in the middle rounds, as well as a pretty deep pool of uh, free agents that you can get that might not even cost you a whole lot of money. So I'm hoping Joe Douglas is gonna attack this uh, position pretty aggressively, but we'll see what happens. Looking forward to some of your takes. If you have any other guys that you want me to start looking at, I'm um, finally trying to you know get into some of the draft stuff. So leave uh, any names below. If you got any comments on Ferguson, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Otherwise, have a good night, and I'll talk to you later.